What's up guys, David here and welcome to another part of the CNC conversion series. Now, as you can see, I have a whole bunch of cables and electronics here and now I'm actually going to get started on the electronics. Before I get started with the video, I want to give a big thanks to this video sponsor, PCBWay. They make super high quality PCBs and until the end of the year, they have their big shopping festival going on where you can have a bunch of savings, coupons and many good things. So make sure to go to pcbway.com to find out more. So the first thing I want to talk about is this enclosure here. I, I was able to score this beautiful uh, electronics enclosure, uh, very, very good price. Uh, it was basically never used it has only a simple scratch on the side but still i got it for like uh, one fifth of the price that it retails for normally and that's why i'm going with such a fancy enclosure i was planning to just like make a box out of some aluminum sheet and like some l brackets or something like that but this of course is going to be super nice and i can mount all my electronics in here it's quite large uh, but this way i have enough space to route all the cables neatly so first step is going to be kind of figuring out where I want all the electronics in here. Then I can bolt them to the mid plate that is in here and start up with the wiring. I also got some very heavy duty wires to make some extension cables for the motors since they aren't able to quite reach here. And I got some nice plugs that way uh, these cables can be removable as well. Another part of the electronics that I still need to do is the limit switches. I have not installed uh, those yet. And that's also, of course, an important part uh, to guarantee some more machine safety. And I'm gonna install this uh, power meter uh, panel, which is gonna tell me uh, what the load on the spindle is. And that way I can kind of more easily know uh, if I'm running at the limit of what the spindle can do or if I can push it even more.
looking for a bolt that's coming. So what you saw right there was me being a complete idiot and screwing everything up. Uh, I plugged in the power supply, the 24 volt power supply into the smooth stepper, which I thought was where it goes since I had a cable for that laying around. But I completely forgot that I'm supposed to plug in 5 volts there and the 24 volts goes only to, to the breakout board. And in the beginning I had the breakout board still plugged in which uh, power cycled the whole thing so it was fine. Then it was like why is it power cycling? So I unplugged the breakout board uh, to figure out if it's the smooth step or the black breakout board. And then of course uh, nothing to power cycle there anymore and plugging in 24 volts to a 5 volt system is gonna make kaboom. So it made kaboom. And now I'm out like 200 bucks for the Ethernet smooth step board and that sucks. Ah! Alright, so it is now a couple days after the big fiery event and as you can see I have mounted the electronics cabinets to the wall now, uh, although of course it is not quite complete. Uh, let me just tell you, like coming into this room and seeing this electronics cabinet mounted here, for some reason this just made this whole CNC look that much more professional. I don't know what it is, but like this kind of cabinet was like a nice uh, off switch here just makes the whole thing look super legit. So I have, uh, have it mounted, all the cables are coming out here at the bottom, well at least the ones I've connected so far, it's only the three motors with their sensor wires. Uh, I still need to add the, all the limit switches and uh, all the spindle control. Uh, and of course uh, there will also be an ethernet uh, cable uh, and a power cable coming out of here. But let's now uh, take a look inside. Uh, I'll use my key here to open up the cabinet. So in here you can see that uh, I'm not uh, done yet at all, but I wanted to get a first electronics video out. Uh, since it will be quite a, a bit longer until I'm actually done with it. You can see the three uh, motor drivers down here uh, that are connected up uh, to the breakup board up here. This is where the Ethernet smooth stepper would be if I didn't blow it up. Here you can see uh, the power supply. Now I did figure out uh, 
why the power supply was blowing up breakers and it's just uh, charging up the capacitors too fast. There is no kind of limiting in there and uh, well, what I will do to fix it is add a soft start to it that just limits the amount of current that is uh, going to it in the first uh, like two seconds and that should solve the problems. Uh, I have ordered it, it just hasn't quite arrived yet. Up here you can see all the speed control for my spindle. Now, how the speed control worked before was there is a switch that uh, changes between off, clockwise and counterclockwise operation. Uh, this switch changes a whole lot of stuff and uh, it took me quite a while to draw up a schematic of what it all does. Um, but I think I got it fig figured out now. And the other thing is that there is a potentiometer uh, that adjusts the RPM and then there is a uh, a readout that is completely separate though from uh, the circuit, so uh, it is very uh, manual. You just adjust it till you see the correct number on the display. And that poses quite a challenge uh, for me to automate this whole stuff. Now, ideally, I set inside of Fusion, I want to turn, have the spindle turn on, and I want it to turn on at 1500 RPMs and then the spindle would turn on and it would turn on at 1500 RPMs. But getting there is quite a challenge. Now, emulating the switch that changes the direction and turns on and off the spindle is fairly simple with a couple of relays. But the potentiometer, well, I could probably figure out how to emulate that as well. But the issue now is that I also have to kind of have a feedback loop since it is very relative and uh, although I can set it to a specific uh, number, it probably is not exactly uh, the RPM I want and I will have to adjust it slightly. So I will need to have uh, like an Arduino or something in between that takes the readout from the display that tells me the actual RPM and then can adjust the signal that it sends to the controller. I think I uh, should be able to uh, come up with how I can do it, but this is uh, quite an involved uh, project in its own. So it's not my first priority. I first want to just get the thing working and I can just manually uh, turn on the spindle and adjust the RPM uh, for the first couple of tests. If some of you have a good idea though, or know of uh, like a project or a product that does all of that, what I need to do here, please let me know down in the comments. Uh, I know a lot of you, uh, have sometimes really great ideas and I always love reading those comments. Well, apart from that, you can see of course that I also have not wired up uh, the switches in the front yet, uh, otherwise there will be cables running here. And there is definitely more than enough material for a part two for the electronics. And uh, if you guys are interested, I can also, once it is all complete, do a detailed run through with exactly which components I'm using and exactly how I have them wired up. But I want to Verify first that it is all working before I tell you something that might not even be working in the end. So with that, I want to thank again PCBWay for sponsoring this video and also you guys for watching it. If you want to see up to date what I'm doing uh, and how my progress is, make sure to check out my Instagram. I do post very frequent updates on there and oftentimes many weeks in advance of uh, when the video comes out on YouTube. Also, make sure to like, comment, subscribe so they don't miss any future videos. You can ring that notification bell since YouTube likes to not post things in the subscription feed. And with that, thanks for watching and until next time.